Before the Sahara became an ocean of sand, rivers once carved life through the land, teeming with predators lost to time. From this ancient landscape, one monster ruled the waterways, a reptile so vast it dwarfed even modern crocodiles. Its name was Sarcosuchus imperator, the flesh crocodile, the river king of the Cretaceous. Stretching over 12 meters and weighing 8 tons, this was no ordinary reptile. It was a living tank. Its armor plates glistened like bronze beneath the desert sun, layered shields forged by evolution. In 1946, French paleontologist Albert Félix de La Parent uncovered the first hint of its existence in the Sahara sands. Decades later, a single 20-centimeter tooth revealed the monster's true size, predator of dinosaurs and giants alike. Sarcosuchus lived in the heart of Gondwana, a continent pulsing with rivers and storms before the desert claimed it. Here, fish thrived the size of cars and so did creatures evolve to devour them whole. But this predator wasn't content with fish. It hunted anything that dared approach the water's edge. Armed with jaws twice as long as a man, Sarcosuchus struck with precision honed by millions of years. Its skull alone stretched over 1.7 meters, lined with over a hundred conical teeth built to grip, not slice. Unlike modern crocodiles, Sarcosuchus had a bulbous snout, its mysterious purpose still debated by scientists today. Some believe it helped amplify sound or strengthen its bite. Others say it was a display for dominance. In the sweltering Cretaceous heat, it lay buried beneath mud and reeds, an ambush predator waiting for the slightest movement. The stillness of the water was its weapon, the silence before a brutal eruption of force. Scientists estimate its bite could crush bone with over eight tons of pressure, enough to snap a dinosaur limb. But Sarcosuchus wasn't just strength, it was strategy, a reptilian assassin mastering patience. Its ambush tactics were legendary, striking from shadows with terrifying speed, then dragging prey into dark depths. Fossil evidence shows it coexisted with Spinosaurus, two apex predators sharing one deadly river. Each hunt was a contest between giants, one ruling the surface, the other lurking unseen below. These prehistoric rivers were theaters of death, where patience, not speed, decided who survived. Over time, the rivers dried, leaving behind fossils locked in red stone, silent witnesses of vanished worlds. The desert hides the bones of monsters and in their shadows, the story of evolution's brutal artistry. From these fragments, paleontologists resurrected a legend, proof that Earth's deadliest hunters weren't always on land. Beneath layers of armor, Sarcosuchus was built like a machine, its ribs fused tight, spine reinforced for the strain of sudden violence. Each movement was deliberate, its legs short but strong, driving it forward through mud with the patience of a lurking storm. Unlike its modern kin, its body stretched far beyond the head, built not just to ambush, but to dominate its river kingdom. The tail acted like an oar, propelling the giant with sudden bursts that could launch its bulk clear from the shallows. Inside, a heart larger than a man's head pumped cooled blood through dense tissue, keeping the hunter silent in searing heat. Its nostrils perched high on the snout allowed it to breathe while almost completely hidden, a perfect assassin's design. The eyes, forward-facing and amber like molten rock, watched every movement along the bank with surgical precision. 
Each tooth was hollow-rooted, replaced for life, hundreds of blades ready for the endless rhythm of feeding and renewal. Its lungs filled like bellows, giving it power to hold breath for nearly an hour beneath dark, unmoving water. When drought struck, it carved deep burrows into drying mud, sealing itself inside until the rains returned. This cycle of waiting and awakening made it almost immortal in its time, an animal sculpted by extremes. Fossil traces show growth rings in its bones, signs of decades of survival, a life measured by floods and famine. Juveniles lived in shallows, feeding on fish and insects, safe beneath their mother's looming shadow. Mother and offspring communicated through vibrations in the water, soundless signals that rippled through the current. When threatened, she lifted her head high, tail arched, a display that sent smaller predators fleeing instantly. Every scar told a story, clashes with rivals, battles for territory, each mark etched into armored hide. In flooded seasons, these giants gathered by the hundreds, turning the river into a living tide of scales and hunger. They bask shoulder to shoulder, conserving heat and watching for stranded prey drawn by the returning waters. Despite their bulk, fights were rare. One violent clash could break bones neither opponent would heal from. Instead, dominance came through posture and patience. Those who waited longest claimed the best hunting ground. The river was their throne and silence their weapon, a realm ruled by endurance rather than speed. Each year, floods renewed life, fish returned, the crocs fed, and the cycle of predator and prey began again. This endless rhythm of death and renewal shaped every creature that shared the Cretaceous waterways. But deep within this balance, pressure was building, the rivers narrowing, droughts lasting longer each year. The age of giants was turning, and even the River King would soon face challenges no strength could overcome. For millions of years, Sarcosuchus ruled unchallenged, its kingdom of rivers flowing endlessly through the heart of Gondwana. When the wet season arrived, the waters swelled with life, and so too did the hunger of the River King. It sensed vibrations before sound, a distant tremor that told of footsteps, of prey, of opportunity. A young iguanodont wanders close, its reflection mirrored in still water, an image about to be shattered. Then, in a heartbeat, the river explodes. Eight tons of muscle, armor, and fury erupt from below. The jaws clamp shut with a crack like breaking stone, dragging prey down into the blood-dark water. The struggle lasts seconds. The silence that follows lasts millions of years, preserved in stone and memory. But even kings fall. Climate turned against the giants that once ruled these rivers. The monsoons weakened, the floods failed, and each year the water withdrew further toward extinction. Without constant flow, fish vanished, Prey herds moved on, and the river hunters grew thin in the heat. Only the strongest survived the final droughts, each season a gamble between hunger and dust. Then came the silence. The river that once birthed monsters became a tomb of salt and sand. Millions of years later, their bones re-emerged sculpted by erosion, rediscovered by human hands. 
The skulls told stories of power and patience, creatures that ruled through waiting, through endurance. For though the age of giants ended, their legacy lived on, in every river predator that followed. Today's crocodiles are smaller, but their design remains nearly unchanged, a triumph of survival through simplicity. Their stillness, their sudden violence, echoes of an ancient master that once hunted dinosaurs. Sarcosuchus may be gone, but its blueprint endures, a memory encoded in scales and bone. From the deserts of the Sahara to rivers that now run red with dusk, its ghost still lingers in the water. In every ripple, in every silent current, lies the shadow of a monster that once ruled the earth. Evolution favors those who wait, and few ever waited as long or as perfectly as the river killer. The Sahara keeps its secrets well, but each fossil unearthed whispers of that vanished kingdom. Sarcosuchus was more than a predator. It was a survivor, a relic of a time when water shaped the world. And though the rivers turned to sand, its story endures, carved into the memory of stone and science. The river is gone, but its king remains eternal. Sarcosuchus, the monster that once ruled the heart of the earth. 